Now, if you've been following along with all the videos so far of making this game, your character should be moving, your character should be jumping, and of course shooting, you might even have baddies, platforms, and everything else going on in your game. One of the things that I love about old school platform games are the platforms themselves, especially when they're moving, because it makes the game a little bit more challenging, it adds a bit of excitement to the level, also can bring extra elements to your level where you have to use a moving block either to escape or to get over an obstacle. So moving platforms for me are the very basics of platform games. I've set up a moving platform and our character can jump on the platform but we've got one big problem. In that the platform moves and the character doesn't. It's almost like the character is glued to that position on the screen. So in this video we're going to look at how to get our character to jump onto the platform and then have it moving at the same speed as the platform and then being able to jump off and do whatever the character needs to do. I've got to warn you, this is one of our advanced videos. So to follow this video, you really need to know what you're doing in stencil. So if you've just jumped to this video, but you don't know how to create movement, shooting, jumping, collisions, you're going to get really confused in this video. Well, that warning aside, let's go and see what we've got so far. I've set up a level two, so if I go to my scenes, it's a level two and I've marked it as my starting scene so that I don't have to keep messing around with level one today. So level two is where we have got our moving platform. In our actors, I've got a brown rectangle which I created in piscalapp.com. I'll put a link below. And that block is simply a brown rectangle and all it does is it moves left to right. Let's first of all deal with the block three movement. And what happens there is really simple. We create an attribute called xvel, x velocity, and I've just set it to 10. I, you can see I've already got a y velocity and that's for a future video. And to get the block to move, very simply break up the movement into three things. So what we do is it's a when updating, we first of all set the x speed to x velocity. Now when we started the game, it's 10. Therefore, x velocity is 10, and as you know, 10 means the block is moving to the right. I've stuck in an if here. If the x position of that block is ever under 50, then set x velocity to 10. What that means is if the block's moving towards the left-hand side and its position ever goes below 50, it will immediately set the x velocity to 10, which is obviously moving it to the right. The opposite side of that is if ever the block is moving to the right and goes past 300, that means the x position of the block ever goes above 300, x velocity is then turned into minus 10, which means it moves to the left. So that's a really simple way of getting a bouncing back and forth or a ping pong motion for our block. So we don't really need to talk about that anymore. Our monkey is still our monkey, so it's got its movement, its animations, and what we're going to have to do is figure out in this block of code how to convince the monkey that when it lands on the platform to rather than move at its own speed to take the speed of the block. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit harder to understand. So to illustrate this I'm going to go back to our game and I'm going to kind of highlight some problems. At this moment with my mouse you'll just see I'm kind of following the block. The block is going to 300, x velocity is minus 10, it goes to 50, x velocity is 10. So it's doing this 10 minus 10 motion, right, left, right, left, and that will continue. The problem that we have is that our monkey character has no idea where the block is. In other words, block 3 cannot talk to the monkey directly. We can have the monkey hit the block, but the block itself can't tell the monkey what its speed is or what its position is or anything. So in stencil, characters or actors are not allowed to talk to each other directly. So in this case, what we're going to have to do is go into level two itself, go to the event, and we're going to have to create an attribute. So what we'll do, very simply go to the palette and we're going to create an attribute it's going to be an actor and I'm simply going to call it block 3 like that. And now what I'm going to have to do is add a when creating and I'm going to set 
block 3 to block 3. Now what does that mean? Very simply it means I've created an attribute called block 3 and what I would like it to do is when the game starts I would like block 3 to actually equal the actor called block 3. Now ignore this little 2, Stencil does that to kind of take care of its own programming. So block 3, the attribute, is now set to the actual block 3 actor. Now of course you can call this attribute whatever you want to. I call it block 3 simply because I'd go mad if I had 20 actors and I named them randomly. I'm going to rename this set actor attribute like that. So that should take care of that. When the game starts level 2 is going to create an attribute called block 3 and then set that to the actual actor. So what we're going to have to do now if you remember when the actor touched the floor a whole bunch of stuff happened to make sure that the actor could jump up in the air. And in this case we have to do a similar thing where when the actor hits a moving block or a moving platform we also need the actor to know that it's hit that moving platform. So let's go to block 3 and very quickly before I forget we need to talk about again the group that it's in. So what I've done is created a brand new group called moving blocks. Moving blocks is allowed to collide with actors. That's our block 3. If you have a look at our monkey, it belongs to the group of actors and if we edit the groups there, actors are allowed to collide with moving blocks. That's important because we want the actor and the block to actually know that they're touching each other. Now just like we needed to sense when the monkey and the floor were touching, we equally now need to know when the monkey and the moving platform are touching each other. Let's go over to the attributes. We already had our touching floor attribute and we're going to create a boolean and we'll call it touching platform like that. So we've now got a very similar situation to touching floor and now it's called touching platform. Let's set up a collision. It's going to be a member of a group. So when actor self, that's the monkey, hits an actor of the group moving blocks, we are very simply going to take touching platform and set it to true. Simple as that. So basically just like when the monkey used to hit the floor and touching floor equals true, we now need touching platform to equal true when he lands on a platform. And remember if you are confused right now, the monkey has to hit any actor of these moving blocks group. Let's rename that to touching platform. So in this case we've taken care of the boolean true and false. Now we have to take care of the movement of the monkey when he touches the moving platform. Let's go into our moving left and right code. Now the code for the moving relies on you pressing the left and the right but now what we need to do is just make sure that if ever touching platform is true, that means if the monkey is actually landed on the moving platform, we have to kind of take care of the motion of the monkey without the left or right being involved. So let's throw in an if like this and what we're going to say is if from our attributes, if touching platform equals true, so if our monkey has landed on a platform like this, what we need to do is now convince the monkey that its speed should be the same as the speed of the moving block. Now as I said at the start of the video, the monkey and block 3 are not allowed to talk to each other directly. So level 2 has that attribute called block 3 and we're going to use that attribute to get the block to tell the monkey what its speed is. So what we'll do here is say if touching platform equals true, in other words if the monkey has landed on the platform, we're going to go to actors and motion and what we're going to do is we're going to say set the x speed and what we're going to try and do is set the x speed of our monkey to the speed or the x speed of the platform. Now how we're going to do that is a little bit complicated but I'll take it a little bit slow right now. We're going to go back to the actors, back to the motion and we're going to say the x speed of. 
We're going to go to behaviors, and I'm going to kind of just stop there for a second. So in English, what we're trying to do is say, set the X speed to something for self, which is the monkey, because we're in the monkey. So set the X speed to something for self. Now that something has to be the speed of block three. So we've got the X speed of self. Now that doesn't make any sense because self is monkey. So for what we need to do is in this behaviors tab, go to the attributes. And here, what we're going to do is steal the speed of block three. How do we do that? So what we're going to say is set the X speed to the X speed of, and now this red thing says, for this scene, get, I'm going to click here, attribute names, and I'm going to go all the way over here to where it says level two and block three. So basically what I'm saying here is this, set the X speed to the X speed of, and then over here it says, well, find me an actor called block three. And that, that was the attribute we set up before. So it's basically going to figure out what is the speed of this thing called block three, and then it's going to set its own X speed to that X speed. Let's just test this game and see if any of that has actually worked. And you can see that works pretty good. We've introduced a little problem in that now we can't move because, of course, when the monkey hits the block, its speed is now locked into the speed of the moving block. So we have to figure out how to solve that problem. Should be not so difficult now. One thing what we can do is when the monkey lands on the platform, we can also, at this point when it lands on the platform, set touching floor to true as well. And what that should do is if you remember, our jump relies on touching floor being true. So if touching floor is true, the monkey is allowed to jump. And in this case, if the monkey ever hits a moving block, not only is touching platform true, but touching floor is true now. So our monkey should be able to jump. Let's just test that very quickly. So let's have a look. Yep, that works pretty well. So the monkey is allowed to jump, but you can see that we've kind of locked it into the motion of the block. So it doesn't matter what I do now, it's kind of stuck there. So let's see if we can figure that out as well. So one easy way to solve that left and right problem that we have is very simply to use our left and our right controls here. So what we can do is make sure we're in our attributes get a couple of touching platforms here. And what we're going to do is as the very first block, what we're going to do is set touching platform to false. Now remember, everything relies on touching platform being true. So if touching platform is true, then the speed of the monkey equals the speed of the block. So in this case, what I've done is very simply, every time you press right, touching platform become false, and if you press left, touching platform will become false. Of course, when you land on the platform, touching floor is set to true. So we've got a lot of stuff happening with the attributes. Let's at least see if this works. So let's see what happens. So here's our monkey. We're going to jump on the platform. And now we have movement on the platform. So it works pretty well. And you can see this platform can now be used just like a regular platform in a game without the monkey getting stuck in position. We still have a problem though, and that problem we've seen before, which is the sticky monkey problem. And that should easily be solved simply by using the same approach we took to touching floor, which was if the left side or the right side or the top. So we, we do need to work on our touching platform a little bit so that our monkey doesn't cheat and we can't just stick onto platforms with our head. But overall, this works really well. And it's a, quite a complicated video. So what I would recommend is that you watch it in small chunks. And if you don't understand something, leave a comment and I'll see if I can answer it as best I can.